This video classroom lesson is sponsored by Transmission Bench. Visit the transmissionbench.com store for the deluxe super kit, other parts, and even the video classroom lessons used during this project. Hello again. I'm ready to move forward with the reassembly of the transmission, and I hope you are too. This is AODE 4R70W class, part two, lesson three. In the last lesson, we took a second closer look at all the parts and took a short tour of the overhaul kit and other new components. We also prepared the case to accept a modified overdrive servo piston pin by chamfering the edge of the pin bore here. Before we can reinstall the drivetrain into the case, there are a few other steps to take which are the goals of this lesson and lesson four. The direct, forward, and reverse drums as well as the pump need reassembly. Let's get started. Get the direct clutch drum piston, spring cage, and snap ring, and take them to another work area. Also get the direct clutch friction and steel plates in plate snap ring and the old inner and outer lip seals which we removed earlier from the piston. The first step to reassemble this clutch is to locate the new direct clutch inner and outer piston seals in the overhaul package. Depending on which model transmission you are working on, the appropriate overhaul package may have as many as six lip seals to choose from. Get the two that have the same diameter as the old ones. Selecting the right seals based on diameter is easy because the other pistons and seals are much larger. The lip on the new seals may be the same or longer than the originals. The new ones in this kit are the longer version and are interchangeable with the short lip design. They will work fine. Install the outer seal into its groove on the piston. The flare of the lip should point down when the piston is held like so. The inner seal installs into a groove in the direct drum. Set it over the bearing journals like so with the lip pointing downward. Use a mechanics pick to work it over the snap ring groove and into the seal groove. Once again, when installed correctly, the lip of the seal flare should be pointing downward. Installation of the piston into its bore is next and requires patience and a little finesse. It's very important not to nick or cut the lip seal of the outer seal as you install it. There is a radius in the clutch drum here at the entrance to the seal board to help compress and guide the flare of the seal in, but it needs a little help. The inner lip seal, because it's below the piston, needs no special attention. Try this method of installation first. Lubricate the inner seal and piston bore with transmission fluid 
or a gel type product such as Transgel or Dynatex Assembly Paste Lube. Put some on the outer seal and the outer seal bore. Use both hands and squeeze the flare of the seal tightly against the piston to compress it for about 15 seconds. And then attempt to push it into its bore lightly while rotating it back and forth. Don't force it too hard. If it will not go in with light pressure, stop Remove it and again compress the seal with your hands and try again. As I said before, have patience and lightly turn and rock the piston with finesse and it will just about fall into place. Install correctly the top of the piston is about 20 thousandths of an inch above the top of the seal bore. Another method is installation using the aid of a feeler gauge blade. As with the other method, lubricate the inner seal and piston bore as well as the outer seal and its bore with gel or transmission fluid. Compress the outer seal with your hands and set the piston into the drum. Carefully insert a feeler gauge blade between the seal and the drum and slowly work around the piston to roll the seal into the bore. A 17 thousandths of an inch thick one with dull edges seems to fit about right. Take special care not to cut the lip seal. If at any point the blade seems to snag, stop, remove the feeler gauge, and begin again in another area around the seal. The piston should eventually fall into its bore as you lightly push it in. As a side note, use a fine whetstone and round off any sharp edges on the feeler gauge blade. Many of them are manufactured with razor sharp edges which might cut the seal. Place the spring cage onto the piston. Compress the cage using the press. Install the snap ring. Even though the original friction and steel plates in our demo transmission are like new, yours may not be. Let's prepare and install new ones. Get the six steel and six direct friction plates from the kit. They are easy to identify because they have the smallest diameter.
We could install them into the drum as is, but it's a good idea to pre-soak the friction plates in transmission fluid. Dip them into a container of fluid to coat them completely. Begin restacking the clutch by first placing one of the six flat bare steel plates into the drum. Place a friction plate in next. Put another steel plate in. Now put another friction plate in. Continue this alternating stacking procedure until all six steels and all six friction plates have been installed. The last plate should be a friction. Finally, place the thick flat end plate into the drum. Replace the snap ring. There should be a generous end plate of between 60 thousandths and 90 thousandths of an inch. Use a combination of feeler gauge blades stacked together to check for proper clearance. I measure about 62 thousandths which is within range. If your measurement falls outside of the 60 to 90 thousandths of an inch range, there are selective snap rings of different thicknesses available to adjust the clearance. In order to complete the direct clutch reassembly and test it, we need the remaining parts for it and the output shaft from the parts bench. Get the inner hub, bearing support washer, and bearing along with the output shaft and ring gear. Place the bearing support washer into the drum. The recess goes down against this shelf above the snap ring.
add fluid to the thrust bearing. Install it with the narrowest diameter race down against the support washer. The protruding lip of the narrow race should face upward. Install the inner hub. Rotate and maneuver it around until it splines with all six friction plates. Install completely, the inner spline part of the hub should contact the thrust bearing here. In order to test the direct clutch with air pressure and make sure it will operate correctly, we need to replace the sealing rings on the output shaft. Set both thrust bearings aside and once again remove this snap ring and separate the ring from the output hub. These sealing rings should always be replaced with new ones. They are included in the overhaul package. Let's take a look. There is a sub package labeled sealing ring kit. The replacement seals are the smaller diameter orange colored ones, but because we are also using the additional Sure Cure kit, We'll use the special rings provided in it, which the instructions recommend that we use. Out of the six Teflon seals in this kit, the two we need are the smallest in diameter. According to the instructions, we should use these in place of the original equipment ones. The diagonal separation at the ends of the ring is called a scarf cut. They can slide back and forth to provide a very effective zero gap seal. Install the new scarf cut rings by expanding them just enough to go over the lands and into the ring grooves. Reposition the shaft upright. Put fluid into the drum to output hub thrust bearing and set it with the protruding lip facing downward into the recess. Put fluid onto the bushing journal and seal.
put some fluid into the center of the drum. This gentle radius will help to compress and guide the sealing rings into the bore. Now carefully set the drum over the shaft. Once completely down against the thrust bearing, the drum should turn freely. Now lift it off the shaft. The rings have now been resized for a perfect seal. They should still have their square shape and have no nicks or evidence of being pinched. If you happen to cut one of the seals or are not satisfied with your first attempt to do this, here's some good news. You get a second chance to do it right. Except for the color, the other new rings from the overhaul package appear to me to be exactly the same as the ones from the Sure Cure kit. Use them if you have to. Set the drum back onto the output shaft. We can test the action and seals of the clutch by applying air pressure to this port in the output shaft. Set the air pressure to no more than 45 PSI and use a blowgun with a rubber tip. The clutch should react as you see here. There should be almost no leakage of air. If you hear a loud hissing, you have an unacceptable leak and you need to find out why. I hear some leakage and suspect it's coming from the ceiling rings because they do not seal as well using air pressure as they do with actual transmission fluid. Remove the drum and add transgel or a small amount of bearing grease to the rings for a better seal. Replace the drum and test again. I hear very little leakage now. This direct clutch will work great. There is another type of Teflon seal you may find supplied in some overhaul packages. Unlike the scarf cut style I just used, these sealing rings are solid and require a different method of installation. As before, remove the original scarf cut rings, or if the rings are solid, Use a razor blade and cut them off. Carefully expand one of the new seals slightly with your fingers and test to see if it will go over the ring land. If it won't, stretch it a little more and try again.
Ideally, you want to enlarge it just enough to go over the ring lens. Don't stretch it too much. Maneuver it into the second groove. Do the same with the other ring. Compress the rings with your fingers as tightly as you can. Reposition the shaft upright. Place the thrust bearing onto the output hub. Put fluid onto the bushing journal and seals. Put some fluid into the center of the drum. Once again, this radius at the entrance to the ceiling ring bore is chamfered to guide the ceiling rings in. The drum should turn freely on the thrust bearing. Now remove the clutch drum. The rings have been compressed and resized for a perfect seal. Like the scarf cut seals, the solid rings should be square and have no nicks or signs of being pinched. Set the drum back on the shaft. Apply air pressure to the port. I hear very little leakage. The solid rings do not require the use of trans gel or grease to seal. If you hear loud hissing and a lot of air escaping, you have an unacceptable leak and you need to find out why. Take apart the entire assembly if you have to, but correct the problem before moving on to the next steps. Separate the drum and thrust bearing from the shaft. Replace the ring gear and snap ring. Set the thrust washer and drum back onto the shaft.
Take this assembly along with the hub to case thrust bearing back to a clean area on the parts bench. These components are ready to reinstall, but we'll set them here one last time as we work on the other sub-assembly. Get the forward drum and shaft along with the piston, return spring, and inner snap ring, as well as the clutch plates and outer snap ring. Get the old forward clutch lip seals. Get the new seals with the same diameter from the overhaul package. Out of the four remaining lip seals in the kit, the two which fit the forward clutch piston are obvious. Install them as you see here. While holding the piston with the ribbed area facing up, the lip of both inner and outer seals should point downward. Apply transmission fluid or transgel to the seals and the drum bore. Set the piston into the drum. You'll need to use a feeler gauge as we did installing the direct clutch piston. As you apply a light downward pressure to the piston, gently help the seal into the bore by carefully inserting the blade between the seal and the drum at an angle and sliding it around the piston. Work slowly and patiently. Remember to stop, withdraw the blade, and begin again in another spot if the blade snags. You don't want to cut the seal. Maintain an even and light pressure around the piston with your fingers as you do this. The piston will eventually install and bottom out into the drum. Place the return spring and retainer onto the piston. Set the assembly into the press and compress the spring. Install the snap ring.
The original Ford clutch pack is ruined, but we will reuse the wavy cushion and end plate. We need new friction and steel plates. It's important to note here that forward and reverse friction and steel plates are the same. Get five friction and five steel plates. Pre-soak the frictions in transmission fluid. Begin installation of the clutch pack by placing the wavy plate in first. This part cushions the application of the clutch when the vehicle is placed into drive. Now place a flat steel plate into the drum. Put a friction plate in next. Now add another steel plate. Add another friction plate. Add a steel. Add a friction. Add one more steel. Add one more friction plate. At this point, there are four steel and four friction plates in the drum. Depending on which model transmission you are working on, this drum may require up to five steel and five friction plates. Our 4R70E version takes five, so we'll add another steel and another friction plate. This last plate before the end plate should always be a friction plate. Install the end plate. Finally, replace the snap ring. The end plate clearance should be within a range of 52 and 90 thousandths of an inch. Use a combination of stacked feeler gauge blades to check it. The clearance here is 75 thousandths, which is fine. If end plate measurement falls outside of the range, there are selective snap rings of various thicknesses to adjust it. Let's pause here, take a break, and end this lesson. Join me later in part two, lesson four, and we'll reassemble the reverse clutch drum and the pump.